summary of some uh, of the boxes. And then we'll have a brainstorming session on the obstacles for making some of the coffee perfect. And then this afternoon, when we have our other session, we'll break up into groups and we'll discuss the different obstacles and how to overcome them. And then we'll have a presentation by different groups. So this is a PowerPoint presentation. There's only one slide because I didn't have time to write the title. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I'll but you know, we're supposed to be technological, so I thought this was the title. Of it. No, it's there's more than that. You can go on. <laughs> Sana Bhakti is that the process of Krishna consciousness is actually quite simple. But it's not easy to understand it because it's so simple. And because our minds are going in different directions. Therefore, it appears to be Sana Bhakti or Krishna consciousness appears to be difficult, but actually we're the ones who are difficult. Because we don't listen so carefully. And, uh, and the whole process of devotional service, probably to summarize one time, is to chant Hare Krishna, and then some chants to try to make the atmosphere conducive so that we become receptive to the holy name. It is not that when we chant the holy name, suddenly, you know, there's something lacking in the holy name, so we have to make so many other arrangements, so many ways to direct and indirect, and this way and that way to chant the holy name then finally we'll be able to appreciate the holy name. So if Krishna is present, well, we chant the holy name, the question is whether we're present or not. <laughs> if we were actually present, then we'd actually become Krishna conscious. But we're generally in the, in the future somewhere, generally in the past somewhere, we're not really here, we're somewhere else. So I'm about you to create the atmosphere by which we can be present when we chant Hare Krishna. Let's go on to the next slide. We have the remote. So there are three stages of devotional service known as Sadhana Bhakti, Baba Bhakti, and Prema Bhakti. One time I wrote to Sri Prabhupada, I said, how does Baba turn into Prema? This was after I was in the movement for three weeks. <laughs> Because actually, when I first came to the movement, Krishna was giving me some mercy, but I didn't know how, you know, relatively how much mercy he was really giving me. And we didn't have the only book, book we had. We didn't have, the first, when I first moved into the temple, they had just published this blue, blue Bhagavad Gita. And besides Prabhupada's original three Bhagavatams, that's all we had. And there was, and we also in the temple, we had one book by Bhai Maharaj, called the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. It wasn't exactly by him. He had translated it, he had someone translated it into English. The commentary is by Srila Jiva Goswami. My temple president told me I shouldn't read that book. So, of course, that was the first book I wanted to read. <laughs> so when everyone was asleep at night, I'd wake up in the middle of the night and read the book. <laughs> I figured there was something in there that because he didn't want to tell he told me not to read it. So I was reading about how Baba turns into Prema. So I was thinking I'm almost on the Baba platform. <laughs> so it would be interesting to find out what happens after I reach the Baba Club. <laughs> and then to confirm, I wrote to Shula Prabhupada. And Shula Prabhupada sent me back a letter, more or less telling me to preach. Telling me how they were distributing, how I should organize the book distribution, uh, Bhagavad Gita distribution in Buffalo, and that, uh, well, more or less, he said, the boys and girls in your country, but well, we just had a, he, he wrote to me, he said, we just had a rock theatre, and 10,000 boys and girls were dancing and chanting in full spiritual ecstasy. But the boys and girls in your country are generally good souls, 
That's why they've taken birth in such a nice country. So please engage all your energies in Christian service, and then your life will become complete. In New York, I've heard that in just two weeks they've distributed 3,000 back and guide heads. I've also heard that in Buffalo you're also distributing back and guide heads very nicely. So please continue in this way, and your success is assured. As Christian sees that you're working seriously to bring his other children back to the spiritual kingdom, then he'll bestow all his blessings upon you. Christian is never ungrateful for our ethics to serve him, rest assured. Then at the end of the letter, he asked me where the $50 was I was supposedly sent, I supposedly sent him for his book fund. And then he said, as far as you question how he wrote Baba Shakti turns into praying, he said that there's no need to trouble yourself over such advanced topics at the present time. <laughs> Shortly my book, The Nectar Devotion, will be coming out, and these things will be explained there. But there is Baba, and as we'll learn shortly, that the goal of Sadhana is to reach Baba. Baba means feeling. We're not just supposed to be dry, liberated brahmacharyas like the four Kumaras. I mean, the, the, we appreciate the four Kumaras, but before they became Krishna conscious, they were impersonals. Exemplary in their sadhana, but not in their emotional level of attainment. Therefore, our, our goal is to become, develop some feeling for Krishna. Ultimately, like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the feeling of separation from Krishna and his associates in Vrindavan. And Sadhana Bhakti is meant for that. Of course, we chant. I remember many times I, had, I was sitting there in Prabhupada's classes. And generally, I, I paid pretty good attention when people gave class. But some, somehow or another, many times, we had the opportunity to listen to many Prabhupada's classes directly in San Francisco, Los Angeles, Buffalo, Dallas, India, New Vrindavan, and so many different, and some, many different places. Sometimes, immediately when Prabhupada starts to say, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, immediately I feel this attack in my heart, and it would say, go to sleep, you're tired. <laughs> and I said, well, I'm not tired. Well, you're going to go to sleep. <laughs> You deserve it. <laughs> I probably did deserve it. Sometimes I could hear Prabhupada's lectures with attention, and sometimes not. In any case, son of Baba Bhakti is our goal, and we understand that, practically speaking, the most important thing, if we read the Madhurya Kandambini, what is the, there are different pro levels, there is Shraddha, you have, we have a little liking. We take some prasadam and we become attracted. Or some other she hands us a book and we like her, so we go to the temple to find out, you know, what her name was. <laughs> a little hate, a little attraction, somehow or another. <laughs> of course that doesn't apply to us, but someone may be attracted like that. Then we associate with the devotees and we find out, you know, that they eat prasadam every day. We become we this sadhu sangha is good. <laughs> when I first joined the movement, before I joined, I was walking along one day and suddenly the whole world changed without any drugs by the way. The whole world just changed. And I suddenly realized that actually there was a higher consciousness because I was walking to my a park. Well it was actually a cemetery because this is Buffalo, New York. The only park they had was a cemetery. <laughs> I was walking there, and suddenly everything changed. Everything, the buildings looked like they were beautiful. I mean, definitely was the change from Buffalo. And the park, I walked there, and suddenly my, all my senses were enlivened. I could hear all the birds and hear the, the water going down the waterfall. And then I suddenly realized that actually well, there was higher consciousness, that there was an end, that everything was unlimited. 